the Nissan Rogue is quickly becoming a very hot selling SUV in the US. Today we have the 2018 Nissan Rogue SV with the premium package and the midnight package. So it's good looking, it provides good value. There's quite a bit of features in here. Let's check it out. Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Nolan Merrill, this is Prime Autotainment. Before I get started with this 2018 Nissan Rogue, I wanna thank Fenton Nissan in Rockwall, Texas. They were super generous to let me show you this today. They just got this shined up for me. If you're in the DFW area, please check them out or check them out online. So as we get started with the Midnight Package, we have that black V-Motion grille. All trim levels will get the standard LED daytime running light, kind of like that little wink on the inside of the headlight. You can probably see it flickering right now. Otherwise, we will get halogen headlights. The only way you can get LEDs is on the SL trim. So on the side is where you can really see some of that midnight package coming through. On the Rogues, you'll range from 17 all the way up to optional 19 inch wheels, but we do have the black finish midnight package wheels right here. These are 17s. I think the black looks great with this white color that we have. We even have the black little fender flare going around the edge, black mirror caps. These mirror caps also do have LED turn signals in them, and that is on the SV trim and up for the LED turn signals. And then even running along the bottom, we have some more black trim on the skirt down there. We do have chrome door handles. You'll typically get black on the S model, but we will get chrome on the SV and up. And then if you take a look up top, we even do have the black roof rails up there as well. All the black accents go really well together. Coming around back of the rug, we do have LED taillights. Now those are standard and that's nice to have. As you can see with the midnight package, we have the dark lettering there, dark lettering over here. So midnight package and premium package on this SV trim. On the SV trim, we get a motion activated lift gate standard and that's on the SV and up. All you gotta do is kick your foot underneath of it and it will open up. Let's take a look. So one thing to take note for 2018 is that the third row is no longer available. It's just the second row, just like most of the other crossovers in this segment. But this will unveil 39.3 cubic feet behind the second row and 70 feet when you put all the seats down. And that's actually more than its larger sibling, the Murano, which is quite impressive. As you can see, we do have an actual center pass through. So you can have both seats up and have that pass through. So you can have a skinny item there, or you can fold all the seats down with the handle on both sides. So one cool thing about this cargo is we have a dividing shelf system here. I like to call it the divide and conquer, but it's divide and hide. Anyways, you can pretty much move these wherever you want to. So I lift this up. You can see there's actually room for a little bit of storage there. I can pull it out of the way and slide it down lower or you can have it up higher so it's a smooth entrance going into the back of the vehicle and now they're both flat. I can lift this one up and it's pretty easy to do with one hand. I'm not making it look easy but then you can have it flat with this cargo area here or, or you can put that top shelf up above. You can kind of divide and do it however you please and then underneath of here we have our spare tire in addition to all that we have an abundance of hooks on both sides plus we have a 12 volt power outlet back here as well and then slots for a tunnel cover if you need it the rogue sv trim and up gives us the smart key system with push button start and remote start familiar nissan key fob skinny lightweight and you can pull a real key out of it so to use this just have the one button right here to lock it or unlock it and the mirror will flash. Plus, like I said, we do have remote start. Hit the lock, hold the little circle. There you go. Hop inside the 2018 Nissan Rogue and you'll get Nissan's zero gravity astronaut inspired seats. They help reduce fatigue. They are certainly comfortable. The bolstering is about medium. It is comfortable for me. There is some room on my side, but it still seems to give me a little bit of a hug. So on the base S trim, you'll get six-way manual cloth. 
We have cloth eight-way power, two-way lumbar in this trim, and you'll get leather on the SL trim. The passenger side is manual all the way across the board. No power seats there, but with this seat about midway in its track up and down, I have a ton of space above me. I'm five foot nine, not very tall, not super short. You can also move this seat up really high if you're shorter, so accommodating passengers should not be a problem at all. This steering wheel does move in and out a good amount. It is a comfortable spot. I never had any issues getting it where I needed it. Overall, this is a good place to be. Not to mention that on the SV trim and up, these are also heated seats. Now that we're inside the Rogue, let's take a quick hands-on look. So I really love this armrest. It is very soft and supple. We even have a soft upper part right here. It is plasticky through here. We do have one automatic window as well as our memory settings thanks to the premium package. One thing that kind of threw me off when I first got in here was there's not like a little handle right here. It's this handle, but I really do like this handle. And when we shut the door, it is very solid sounding. That brings us into this cabin and we do get a leather wrapped steering wheel and I am a fan of the D-cut steering wheel. We have a mix of soft touch materials on top. This looks soft, it's got a stitching line but it is actually plastic but not a big deal, not like you're gonna be touching it anyways. So as we move down here, we have our traction control, cargo hatch opener, the fuel door, heated steering wheel with this premium package on the SV and then our sport and eco mode and we'll go through those as we drive. Our steering wheel does also give us some controls and it is leather wrapped. It is a little bit firm for what I was expecting but like I said I am a fan of the D-cut. And then on the right side you have your, your calling feature, your cruise control and our intelligent cruise control thanks to the premium package once again. So as we go ahead and look at these gauges we have regular analog gauges and then Nissan's driver information display right there. We can scroll through a pretty good amount of information. As you can see, we have the clock and temperature up above as well as your gear and your odometer down below. As we scroll through audio, compass, I'll just kind of scroll through all of this. Don't pay attention to the fuel economy because that was, this vehicle literally just came off the lot and I just drove about a mile away from the dealership and I've been idling here, so no worries about that. Continue going over, you can see your average speed, and as you see me scroll, there's a one and a two, so you can have a couple different settings there. Obviously, you can customize everything from your driver assistance features to your vehicle settings, locks, and all that stuff. Any warning messages, like for example, if I open the door or if you have a low tire, things like that. In fact, tire pressure here, and like I said, this just came off the lot, so the tires are overinflated but it will show you that. Your safety shield, we'll click on that. We have our emergency braking, which is standard. Emergency braking with pedestrian detection is on the higher levels. And then our blind spot, which is standard with rear cross traffic alert, plus another driver assistance feature right here when it's engaged. Moving over to the center stack, one thing that is very much appreciated is that we have a seven inch touchscreen as well as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Standard on all of these trims. So you can use Nissan's um, own system here. You have your map and navigation thanks to the premium package as well. You can see pretty much whatever you want to on here. You can customize things as you can see our menu down there below as well. It's nice to have an actual volume and tuning knob and another feature, stand, or not standard, but with the premium package is Sirius XM, so that's something to keep in mind, as well as this camera button up here for our around view monitor. So you can see a camera in the front, you can see a top down view there, and when I hit that again, you can see it on the side over here as well. Plus, when we go into reverse, we do have, as you can see, we still see the side over there. We can change that for just the regular camera and we do have dynamic lines which is always appreciated. This system comes with six speakers but you can option up for the premium Bose sound system with a dual woofer system. We do have dual zone climate control on this trim. Always welcome as you can see different settings between there and regular buttons that are easy to use and then these turn dials do feel nice and have an actual click to them. Everything seems to be made pretty well up there. Moving down a little lower, we have an auxiliary port, USB port, a 12 volt power outlet so you can be connected. This is a textured mat right here. It's a good place to store some items. Got the key fob down here. No wireless charging port here in this trim. As we move back, we have our shifter and this is the CVT shifter, but we can shift down into drive, move it over into the plus and minus and shift your own gears. 
This does feel nice. It is leather wrapped around here. These cup holders definitely get a good grade for me. They're large, they're accommodating, they're deep enough. My bottle fits no problem. And then we have another slot down here next to our heated seat buttons and it does accommodate a large iPhone Plus. Going back to check out this center armrest. This again is very soft, just like the door, just like the armrest. Open that up. It's a one tier armrest. It's fairly deep. We do have another USB port and a 12 volt power outlet and you can fit a decent amount in there. It's not quite as wide as I would have expected. As we go over to the glove box, it's damp opening. It does not lock, but it is very deep and it can hold quite a bit and it's nice to have it kind of on a downhill instead of straight out so your items are not falling out. We do have the entire visor sliding on both sides with the vanity mirror and light. So no automatic dimming mirror on this trim. We are in the SV trim, but we do have this where we can turn it into day and night mode. We get a pretty wide sunglass holder. A panoramic sunroof is optional on the SV trim and up, but we do not have it here. Then when we go to turn on our interior lights, these are actually pretty bright as you can see. As usual, we'll check out the visibility. The side windows are pretty big. Those seats are in an upright position and that back window is actually a little bit tiny bigger than I was thinking, but typical crossover. There's a small window back there when those seats aren't in the way. Plus you have your blind spot, you have your around view monitor and rear cross traffic alert. Hop inside the back seat of the Rogue and you'll find that this is also pretty comfortable. Behind myself at five foot nine, I do have pretty good knee space, good foot space, a nice soft armrest on this door with a cup holder space as well. And if I sit up tall, I can put my hand above my head, not quite a full fist, but it will accommodate some pretty tall passengers. Might be a little tight for six foot and up. But let me scoot over to the middle when our armrest is folded up. I can sit up tall right here and be just fine. I have enough room for my feet even though there's a small hump here, but there are air vents right here in front of the second row seat for the back seat passengers. Fitting three adults across might be tight, but not too bad overall. We can also fold down this centerpiece that you saw from the cargo area. It's not a soft armrest, but it does have two cup holders and that's always welcome in the back seat. Plus we have grab handles on both sides. Overall, a good spacious back seat, not to mention that this seat can move forward and backwards and it can also recline. All right, everybody, we are on the road in the 2018 Nissan Rogue. So starting off the engine for this Rogue, it's the same across the board for the gas models. It's a two and a half liter four cylinder. It puts out 170 horsepower and 175 pound feet of torque. And all of those are paired with a CVT. It's Nissan's Xtronic CVT that you're familiar with in their other vehicles. On this front wheel drive model, miles per gallon will be 26 in the city and 33 on the highway. And you will lose one mile per gallon with all wheel drive, the intelligent all wheel drive. Now the hybrid is different. It gets 33 miles per gallon in the city and 35 miles per gallon on the highway. One of my first impressions with this Rogue is that it's very, it's pretty quiet and it's a smooth operating vehicle. Now I'm pulling onto the highway in normal mode. And there you can hear the, the CVT kind of mimic uh, transmission shifts. So initially, right when you get on the throttle, there's a decent amount of little torque that kind of comes out. It feels a little bit punchy, but then it's definitely not a fast vehicle and it's not made to be fast, obviously. It does have adequate power. And the primary goal of this is fuel efficiency and ride comfort. And it does very good at both of those. Okay, I just put it in sport mode. It's kind of got an interesting sound to it. So it's a little bit louder in here from that engine than what I would expect the engine and the transmission. But overall, I'm up to speed now. It is a pretty smooth road, but it's a moderately windy day, about 15 mile per hour winds. And I do hear just a tiny bit of wind noise around. It doesn't feel like anything's seeping into this cab, but I can just kind of hear it. Road noise is actually pretty good. Like I was saying for my first impression, the ride comfort is very good. It's, it's soft riding. I haven't hit anything 
big with any bumps, but it's a comfortable ride. I, nothing has really disturbed me in here. And part of that is that these Rogues come with an active ride control, and the way it operates is it works to smooth out bumps. I was reading a little bit about it on Nissan's website. It will adjust, uh, it will kind of operate the wheels a little differently with brake and torque, and it's supposed to help smooth out the bumps and give you a smoother ride. The steering feel is really light. It's really easy to handle. It is comfortable. Like I said, the steering wheel is a little firm, but let's go around this turn here. We're gonna accelerate around it. And I can hold the line pretty well. I don't necessarily feel any body roll. It does not inspire confidence, but it's not supposed to. You, you do have a pretty good feel of the road and where it's gonna put you. The steering is just really light. So I'm gonna do my U-turn test here. I could have really imagined in a parking lot, this steering wheel being really easy to maneuver and to handle. All right, time for the U-turn. Full crank, very sharp, very good turn. Like I said, steering so easy to turn. So I'm gonna put it in sport mode again. I don't like how the sport mode and eco mode button is how they are kind of out of the way. They're a little bit annoying to reach down for. All right, we are in sport mode. We're gonna head around that corner again. So sport mode definitely keeps the RPMs higher. That's not full throttle. So I can hold a decent speed. I'm going 60 around this turn and it's a decently sharp turn. I do feel planted to the road. I'm not feeling the body roll, like I said. It, it really does feel pretty good. One thing that I would like to see with this midnight package, considering it's kind of a sportier package, is maybe a sport tuned suspension. Make it feel a little bit, a little bit more lively in the turns, maybe a little bit more uh, beef on the steering wheel as an option for customers. But overall, this does exactly what it's supposed to. It's comfortable. It's pretty spacious in here. I would like to see them keep the third row, but I understand most people probably don't use it and you could upgrade to a bigger SUV if you really need to use that third row. The brake feel on the Rogue does feel pretty linear to me, so it doesn't have a hard bite right away. It, it, feels, it feels good. It's a little bit soft for my taste, but there's no problem braking. And these are actually, all four wheels are vented disc brakes. It's always nice to see vented brakes, even in the back because not every vehicle offers that. Like I said, this is the SV trim with the premium package. It's a $1,500 package and you really do get quite a bit of features with it. Uh, some of my favorites are the around view monitor and the memory seats so that when my wife moves my seat, I can move it back where I want it to. Anyways, I think it's a good value. I really do like the looks and the appearance of this midnight package. The black accents with this white color really pop and contrast really well together. What do you think of this vehicle? How does it compete with the others in the segment? I have done reviews on the RAV4, the Equinox, the CRV, so please be sure to check those out. Real quick here, now I am on a rougher surface road and I wanna know if you can tell a difference between that smooth blacktop road I was on earlier. I have hit a few bumps. For the most part, it certainly does feel smooth. It, it, even though it's, it's soft, it's a soft suspension, like I said, I didn't really notice body roll, which was nice. And I mean, there is some there, but it's not like something that makes you feel like you're gonna slide around or lose control. That's gonna be a conclusion to this review. The Nissan Rogue provides good value. It feels well built and solid. And there's no wonder that it's one of the best selling vehicles in America. Leave your thoughts down below. Leave some comments. Let me know what you think of this video. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Let me know what you think of the vehicle itself. I'd love to hear from you. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Leave your feedback down below. I wanna know how I can get better, what you liked about the video, what you didn't like about the video. If you're new to my channel, I post videos every single week. Please subscribe down below to Prime Autotainment. Also, follow me on Instagram and Facebook, at Prime Autotainment, for previews of what vehicles I'm gonna be driving, as well as some extras. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next week.